good evening everyone and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. I'm really excited about today's guest as we head up to Dryden, Michigan and 13 year old Katie Hediger. Katie, how are you doing this evening? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. You've had a lot of exciting things going on. First of all, on air, we want to wish you a happy birthday because I know you just had a birthday, what, a couple weeks ago? Yeah, thank you. So what's it feel like to be a 13-year-old? Any different than 12? Mm, I get a few good things. I get to sit in the front seat now, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny. That's exactly funny. You can drive a race car over 100 mile an hour, but you had to sit in the back seat because you weren't 13 yet. Is that like a state yeah, law? Yeah, my, my mom worked for GM and she worked in the safety department, so she was very strict about all the oh. safety rules. Oh, yeah, that is good. So, like I said, a lot of things have been going on, just like all the other drivers around the country, all the other series. You've been dealing with the COVID-19, so how have you been dealing with that so far? Um, well, it's, so I'm like very athletic, so I do a whole bunch of sports, including racing, and I do a whole bunch of clubs and stuff like that. So a lot of things have been canceled. So like they canceled my school sports, um, racing has been put back and everything. Um, but on our way to the track, we still, we still go into truck stops and stuff, but we have to wear masks, um, cause, especially because my little brother. So we wear masks wherever we go, and we don't go out very much besides for going to the track and everything. Um, but besides for that, we've just been staying at home and staying away from um, like all my friends and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and speaking of the sports, tell everybody what other sports that you actually play. Um, I play volleyball, basketball, and softball. Okay, so out of the three, which is your favorite? Uh, probably basketball. I do travel basketball along with um, racing, and so I do I do that the most. Okay, so are you a point guard, forward? What position do you play in the basketball? Yeah, side? I'm a point guard. Point guard. All right. So during the the, the COVID nineteen, have you been taking uh, virtual school? Uh, yeah, my school got out June tenth. Um, but yeah, we were doing virtual school and we'd have like weekly Zoom meetings with the principal and my teachers and stuff like that. Okay, so is there a favorite class that you actually had on in, in uh, as far as taking the online class? Um, my favorite class would probably be art um, because one, it was like the easiest, um, but also I really enjoy art um, and we won't be able to have it next year. Um, so I was um, excited because we did a whole bunch of cool projects like photography and stuff like that. Awesome. So what was the most challenging class to take online? Probably history because we'd have new assignments every week or every day and we'd have to watch a whole bunch of videos and add on and it was like totally different stuff every single day. And my history teacher, he doesn't really do Zooms. So there was a lot of, so if you had a question, you had to wait like a day to get like an email back from him. Yeah, that doesn't sound like fun. So I know during the shutdown, one of the things that you were really keyed in on was you did a lot of iRacing. I know that you competed in both of the junior late model series that we put on. And so what was that experience like? Um, well, I never really did iRacing before that. I mean, I ran a couple of races, but we had just gotten like the simulator home. So I was on that a lot. I did my weekly trainings with my trainer, Chase Austin. He was a whole lot of help. And, and it, it, it was cool because he was also a race car driver. So when most of the tracks that we went to, he had actually raced at those in real life. So he knew the actual line and the simulator line and tips and tricks of how to run at those tracks. So I think those helped a lot with the iRacing. Yeah, I would have to agree. The, uh opportunity for you to be able to uh, train with Chase Austin from Racecraft One was a huge expense. And that was going to be my next question, but you've already answered it. Um, what kind of things did you really learn on the iRacing that you feel would carry over to the real car? Um, well, the biggest part probably was communication because I 
am not very good at communication back to my team before I racing. And after me and Chase, we worked on like two whole, um, like two hour sessions on just communication back and forth and how the car is doing. And that helped a lot in real life. Um, I actually got like complimented on it from my crew of how much better I was doing. And um, there was a move that Chase um, taught me how to do um, where if you're underneath someone, you drive deeper into the corner. So they go to the high line and you can still have the bottom. Um, and that's actually technically how I won the race this um, past weekend because I started on the inside and I actually did that move and I got the lead and I won the race. So that definitely helped a lot. All right, have you texted or sent an email to Chase yet to tell him that you actually took one of his things that he taught you and put it to real use on the track? Yeah, my, my mom, she likes to email or message him and message Kelly and just tell Kelly how awesome Chase is and how much he helped me in the training. Well, that's good. I've got a call with Kelly later today, so I'll, I'll be able to kind of touch base with him. But that's awesome. And, and for you young drivers that are out there that are thinking that iRacing and these simulators are just big games, listen to what she just said. I mean, she learned a, com a communication curve that sometimes takes drivers years to be able to get that communication down and learn how to be able to uh, talk to their crew chief and talk to their spotter. But she learned that on the simulator and parents, guess what, man, that's a very inexpensive way rather than going out and running multiple races and doing a lot of tests. So kudos to you, Katie, for being able to do that. I think that is awesome. Yeah. So in 2020, you're, you're basically focusing on the CRA Junior Late Model Series and you just came off a big win at Indianapolis Speed Room last weekend. How exciting was that? Yeah, it was it was very exciting because we had we had a fast car the first two races. Um, we set a new track record at Anderson, so that was super exciting. And then we were, we had a fast car for um, for this race also, and so we qualified fourth. And so it was like a little not upsetting, but it was just we wanted to be further up, but we got fourth, and so that put us um, outside the pole, so we started second. Um, and we, <clears throat> sorry, we had a fast car. Um, we all knew that. The whole team, we were like, yeah, we have a fast car. Um, and we knew we could win, but I feel like still the win was super surprising because I mean, I've never run a race, I've never won a race before. So it was just super exciting. And the team did great. They had a fast car. They always do great setting up the car. And it was just super happy. So now that you've been to Victory Lane, it's kind of contagious because you want to go back every weekend, right? Yeah. And um, so my car number is 71. And um, Johnny Van Doren, who helps us on the car, um, his car number is 71 too. Um, but he couldn't race this weekend. So he had a driver, Carson Hosova, race for him. And Carson won um, this weekend he won today and then um i had a softball tournament yesterday and my number 71 and my team won both of our games too so it seems like 71 is the lucky number 71 was a winning number last week absolutely so why didn't you just tell carson say carson you know what just go set in the stands and i'll i'll run this race too well it was a 400 lap race so i was oh. like well, I, the most I've run is 30 laps, so I don't think I can do that. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about you. You had mentioned that your car has been fast, but your car was fast too. If we go back to early June and go to Anderson Speedway, um, you set a new track record there and all with an injury. Give us a little recap of that race and how that weekend kind of went, with, especially with you being on crutches and did that play effect in... Uh, your driving ability at that race? Yeah, so two days before the race, I had slipped on our deck while playing volleyball and I broke my toe. I broke and dislocated it in two spots. And so it was pretty bad. And um, so we had the race. And so my dad, we were like trying to figure out something to do. 
because all that our goal was is so I could still race. Like that's what our goal was, figure out something where we could race. The doctor said we could race if I was up to it. And so we were gonna race that weekend. Um, so my dad actually built a block that was about this tall and we screwed it, we drilled it into my car um, by the brake pedal. So I could actually use my heel instead of my toe when I pushed the brake. So I had, it was less um, consistent because my toe, I can um, do it better, like control it better. Um, but I guess it worked because we set a new track record and we qualified first and we finished third. So it must have worked, but it was, it was a lot. I think the new track record helped because after I had broken my toe, I was like down because I was like, well, now I probably won't do good because I have a broken toe. So how am I going to do good if I have that? And so I think that we got third so for um, our overall finish. And I think that just lifted everybody's moods because one, I had a broken toe and two, we got a new track record and we finished third. Well, you've heard me say multiple times that confidence is one of the most important things uh, to a race car driver. I believe it's uh, worth at least two tenths anywhere that you go racing. So the fact that you set that new track record you were confident going into that race, and I, and I do believe and I agree with you that that probably had a big effect on your results. Yeah. Now, I know that you love Anderson Speedway, and, and I know that if you talk to a lot of people that really understand racing, they'll all tell you that Anderson Speedway is a very, very tough track to kind of get it down and to race on. What makes that one of your favorite tracks? Um, I think that it's my favorite because it has a lot, of, it does have a lot of banking in the corners. So you can drive the car in really hard and um, use a lot of brake. And I have a problem of driving the car in too hard. So I think that that's why it makes Anderson an easier and funner track for me because I can drive the car in and be really fast at the same time. Okay, so you've got roughly five other different tracks that you're going to be visiting in the junior light model. Is there one of those tracks outside of Anderson that you're looking forward to running? Um, well, we do have Kill Care Speedway um, in Ohio on August 2nd, and that's my next race. And excuse me, and I'm looking forward to that race because I they have a quarter major track on that property and I raced there. I won my first Midwest Thunder race there. And, but I've never been to the big track. So I'm pretty excited to see what, um, cause I've never seen the track or done anything like that. So I'm excited to go to that track and hopefully we can win. So then it's like, well, hopefully it, that truck track is um, good luck because I want to for quarter midget and hopefully I can win in the big car then too. Yeah, I know we've got a lot of races that were canceled early in the year. You've got a lot of tracks actually in the Michigan area that aren't open yet. Um, I did get an updated race schedule on you today, so for any of you that want to know where K Katie's going to be running, just go to her uh, website at katiehedingerracing.com and you can check that out. Um, let's now move and let's talk a little bit about your sportsman late model. Can you share with the viewers some of the differences between the two cars? Um, so my template late model, which is um, the bigger one. It has a 604 Chevy crate motor and it goes 450 horsepower, where the junior has a 602 Chevy crate motor and it goes 300 horsepower. Okay, so which one of the two is your favorite to drive? My, so, so far, I like the template late model because it's faster. Um, we practiced at Kalamazoo the other day and we hit 96 miles per hour. So I like that car because it's faster, but I also like the junior because I'm more experienced with it. And I feel like I can have more control on it. Um, where the template late model, it's just like speed and crazy and fast and all that stuff. But I think that when I race the template late model more often, I think that I'll get to really like that one. Yeah, I, I agree with you. So walk us through your race day preparation. I know a lot of drivers have a lot of different things that they like to do getting prepared for a race day. What does your race day preparation look like? 
Um, so usually since the races start later, I sleep in a lot. So I think because I like to conserve my energy and sleep. So I sleep in a lot and um, usually um, I eat like a big breakfast, um, like eggs and toast and stuff because Johnny Van Doren, he's, um, he helps with the cars and he's uh, basically my crew chief. And so since he's a racer also, he gives me a lot of tips and tricks on what to do before the race day. So like what to eat before the race day that will settle in my stomach for the race and for the heat and stuff and what to drink. So usually I drink a lot of Gatorade, like uh, the G2 low sugar Gatorade. A lot of things we can't do on race day um, that we got from my grandpa. So like no green at the racetrack and we can't eat peanuts at the racetrack, which stinks because I love peanut M&Ms. Like, that's my favorite candy ever. And so I'm always wanting to eat those, like, after the race. But even after the race, like, on race day, no peanut M&Ms. That's funny. I've heard several people that talk about those same two things. No green and no, and no peanuts. That's funny. I think that's an old school thing, but you know what? If it works... Keep that heritage a part of your racing, and, and uh, I think that's really cool. Now, let's shift gears a little bit, because I know that you currently did an interview with Tom Baker and Jacob Seelman on Motorsports Madness. And what was that like? Because I don't know if you realize it or not, but that's a massive audience in the millions, because that show goes out on, uh, you know, Sirius Radio. It's on the Dan Patrick ESPN platform. So did you have a good time doing that show with those two knuckleheads? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, I usually do my interviews with Tom Baker, so it wasn't like, oh, I'm super nervous. I don't want to mess up. I mean, I was, I, I didn't want to mess up, but it was cool because Tom Baker was there too. So um, it's not like I have these two strangers that I'm talking to where, <clears throat> sorry, where I have to be like different or something. But it was a lot of fun because I love doing the interviews. I think they're so much fun because I get to tell the fans a lot more about myself if, like, I don't meet them. So then when I do meet them and they come to a race, then it, they know a little about me and they know who I am. So it's more like a family than meeting a big fan. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Um, um, Tom Baker actually had to stop me and talk over me to go to a commercial because I would not stop talking. <laughs> Um, because usually my parents can't get me, can't get me to talk enough to people, but on the interview, my mom's like, you would not stop talking. <laughs> I know Tom called me right after that interview and goes, oh my gosh, she's amazing. I had to slow her down once, uh, it was time to he head to a break and, and she didn't, couldn't find the brake pedal, but, but that was really cool. For any of you that haven't heard that interview, you can go to raceface.tv, um, click on podcast, go down to Race Chaser Media, and I think the date, if I believe it was June 25th, and I believe Katie's um, part of that started about one minute, about one hour and two minutes into the video. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, um, I encourage you to go over it. It was quite entertaining. So Katie, I let me probably... ask you. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll probably always remember that interview because that was on my birthday. So oh, that's right. it was pretty cool. Yeah, they were going to sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> Trust me, I've heard them both sing. It's a good thing they didn't. <clears throat> so moving forward, what does the 2020 season look like for you um, over the next couple of months? Um, well, I don't have my next race until August 2nd, um, which is at Kill Care in Ohio. Um, and honestly, it can be... We don't really know at this point because we had a lot of Michigan races that we were going to have on the schedule, but Michigan went to phase two, so all the racetracks closed near us. So now we're looking for more races in Indiana to race because like all the tracks near us in uh, Michigan that we were going to race at closed. So mostly Ohio and Indiana is probably where my next most races are going to be. Um, since those have opened the tracks. Okay, so let's now look into the future. If you had a crystal ball, where do you see Kading Hediger in the next five years? Well, hopefully 
in the next couple years and in the five years I can have a ARCA car because I want to go to NASCAR like that's my overtime goal but hopefully I can go to ARCA and get a car and a sponsor and race in ARCA because we went to the ARCA race at Lucas Oil um, a couple weekends ago and that was awesome I loved meeting all the drivers and I got to see Haley Deegan and I want to race those like ARCA is my next goal, but then NASCAR is my overtime goal. Watch out, Haley, here she comes. So <laughs> let me ask you something. Um, anything else on your schedule outside of the junior late model in the Sportsman Series for 2020? Um, so probably softball because um, I play travel softball. So I'll probably have, um, I actually have a softball tournament this weekend. So I probably have some softball games, but, and then school starting up then too. Um, hopefully my school can start up and I can see my friends and everything, but uh, my school is not going to do school sports. So hopefully I can find some small leagues to play like volleyball and basketball in because my school, um, we have like budget cuts and because of coronavirus, we can't have sports. So trying to find things to stay active in because I'm a very athletic person. So just to stay athletic and um, probably hang out with my siblings and family and stuff like that. So what position do you play in softball? I play shortstop. Short, oh, wow. Okay. So I'm not going to ask you if you're good because you wouldn't be at shortstop if you weren't. Do you swing <laughs> a good bat too? Sometimes. I had a pretty good hit yesterday. So. All right. So I think, uh, you pretty much even answered what you actually do when you're not racing. Is there anything else outside of sports and racing that Katie's involved in? Um, not really. Sometimes I do like after school, like um, extra classes and stuff like that. Um, last year I did photography, um, but for like the yearbook and stuff, but Mostly it's just racing, simulator, and sports. That's mostly my life. Katie, we're just about out of time. Do you want to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? Yeah, um, my sponsors are Victory Custom Trailers, Vanderon Racing Development, K1 Race Gear, Turn One, Sim Seats, Duco Performance, um, Intech Trailers, Peaks P Racewear, AC5 Graphics, and yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> All right, well, that's a pretty good list of sponsors. So everybody, again, if you've not been following Katie Hedinger, go to her website, katiehedingerracing.com. Go to the Fan Zone, follow her on social media. Also sign up for her digital newsletter. And Katie, thanks again for being with us. We'll be checking back with you a little bit later this year. Don't get hurt playing softball. We don't need you on crutches again. <laughs> and then good luck uh, as far as the, the rest of your racing is. And hopefully you'll find some late model races down in Ohio and Indiana that you can be a part of. And for all of you viewers, if you've missed any of our programs, you can actually go to raceface.tv on demand and get caught up there. Again, my name is Rod Wortham, and thanks to all of you for watching. We'll see you back here real soon.